everyone, this is Catching Up with the Nerds with your hosts, Tom and JC, and our special guest, David. This is a podcast about two dads that are catching up on all the nerdy stuff we missed, sharing how we pass on our nerdy passions to our kids, and deep diving into nerd pop culture to make it more accessible for you. Welcome back, everyone. Hey, yo. Yo. Man, I'm mixing two podcasts now. I'm just using my intro for everything. Uh, easier that way. Yeah, it's easier that way. One last time, JC. One, One last time. Time. Uh, but it, is it is it the last time though mm. well i guess we'll, we'll find out on friday anyway we get yeah. ahead oh, isn't, it, isn't it two weeks yeah we get falcon know, falcon what you're yeah. falcons whatever 19th i think dave introduce yourself hi you be. people hi my name's still david i still help to run the grit and grind basketball podcast uh alongside tom and some other fine co-hosts um yes. I also dabble in teaching as my day job um, and testing now, apparently. Mm. Um, <laughs> uh, I am into computer games. I was a big Nintendo guy up until the PlayStation 4 when I converted to Sony. Um, right. And I'm never going back. <laughs> um, I'm also into anime. Uh, I'm into like nerdy cartoons and things. You know, the usual Centurions. Round of applause for Centurions. Um, Thunder, not Thunderbirds, what's the other one? Thundercats. Ah, that's right. All that kind of good stuff. Um, and I also dabble in comics a little bit. Um, and then other little nerdy areas. Um, but that, that's, that, those are the big ones. All right. Uh, my name is Steel Tom. I'm still 50% of the Catching Up With The Nerds podcast and i'm still 100 french i'm still married to my lovely wife ellie for the last uh well, uh, something odd years and i still have two kids one who's four years old and uh is still a boy and his name is still louis and the other one who's still 11 and uh named emily i uh, love video games very much and they love me too uh, i also love um, what else do i like anything comics anime manga uh anything nerdy science i love science i discovered that this week i still love science <laughs> and uh i discovered today that this week i know we we're gonna do that one day but I discovered this week the lovely lovely um movie called king's man uh, uh, yeah. i thought i would drop in before we start this because it is too good not to mention yep. that was it over to you jc nice i am still juan carlos caray i am occasionally known as jc i am still married to my wife of 17 17 years yeah um and uh that sounds good um and uh her name is fiorella and i've got uh i occasionally see my two lovely kids uh of aiden and arabelle um and i am still very much into graphic novels into novels of fantasy and fiction uh nerdy movies series and occasionally dabble in video games as well welcome back let's do this guys one last one Allegedly, allegedly one last one. Mm. And if you don't know what we're talking about, then I don't know what we're doing here because it literally says in the title, this is the recap for episode nine of One oh, Division, yeah. aka the finale, aka the final, aka maybe there's episode 10 coming, aka that's not happening. Um, <laughs> AKA anyway. we got we got trolled hard, we man. Trolled. <laughs> and I've got a lot to say about that. Uh, yes. but we'll get to that we'll get to it we'll get to it um so uh the format remains the same we are going to go through the plot points uh the infamous jc recap recapping the episode in three sentences and then going through the entire episode point by point of things that were in- interesting and then eh, a bunch of easter eggs i'm sure we've we've found some and the themes and then the questions and then I think we'll we'll and we'll finish this with a review of the entire series. And yeah. uh, I think your point, JC, was uh, you know kind of understand how we felt before we started watching it, whilst we were watching it, and then how do we feel now? It's all done and dusted. Yeah. So that's that. Uh, that was the menu. Let's go through the starters, which is JC's lovely, lovely introduction to the episode. So th- I'm, I'm stressed out about this. I ain't gonna lie. Why? It's like, Why? There's a lot to talk about here. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a huge recap. But let let let's take it back. Bring it back to brand. 
Uh, three lines to describe that last episode. <laughs> no X-Men, no Mephisto, and no effing justice for Sparky. That's all I got to say. Yeah, not even mentions. Not even, not even like a little tail wag. Nothing. But Dave is thinking, uh, yeah, there's a little bit of justice. There's a touch of justice. A little bit of justice. All right, let's, we, we, we can talk about justice for Sparky because we need Not justice. the way you wanted it to uh, be. Okay, so let's do this. So mm. it is a long recap, and uh, I ain't going to lie, I, I've peppered it with a few references as to some homages that I think were unintentional, but that I very much got nerdy about. So let's get going. Uh, we open up with Agatha and Wanda confronting each other. Uh, Wanda kind of blasts Agatha, but Agatha just begins to absorb it as we learned in the previous episodes. Uh, Wanda's hand begins to drain out a little bit like we saw those mm-hmm. witches happen. That had happened to those witches in the previous episode. And then she throws a car <laughs> at Agatha. And we get that nice Wizard of Oz moment where we see the boots under yeah. the car, which was lovely. It was super good. Um, then we see fake vision show up. So white vision, which uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call fission. Uh, Mm -hmm. for now. Uh, He comes to Wanda and they look like they're going to have a moment until he tries to crush her skull. And that's where I think she kind of like picked up on the fact that he wasn't there for good reasons. Um, Wanda, Wanda's vision, who then I will call vision for this episode, just to make it less confusing, uh, Mm -hmm. saves her. Uh, And then Wanda apologizes to vision for not telling him the truth. Uh, originally, right? Yeah. Uh, then they go after Fission uh, and Monica's trapped with Fietro and <laughs> and he knocks her out. Uh, Fission then fights against Wishin. <laughs> it's going so well. Uh, and, oh, then, yeah. and then Agent Wu is detained by Hayward. Hayward does his best best Bond villain impression and mm. gives away the entire plan to him while he's stealing a phone and then and then he that he wants to use to call the FBI and then he gets put by himself with a with a clip on it with a with a paper clip in his hand and he picks the clock that picks the 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 handcuffs and then goes flourish which was so good uh <laughs> but uh back at the town Agatha starts to like wake up people so that Wanda can see the impact that she's had on them and what she's done to them. Monica figures out that, that Fietro is Ralph Boner. Oh. Uh, Disney, we need to talk yeah. about this. But yeah. uh, And then Fietro draws what is his best Beavis and Butthead impression and goes, Boner. <laughs> yeah. like, really? Which, so, is, which, which is what I was doing exact same time. I, uh, <laughs> I did turn on Boner. <laughs> The twins run out to help their parents. Uh, and then the townspeople are now all woken up and start to tell Wanda how horrible it's been, even asking to be killed instead of living in this in this um, kind of moment of grief that they're that they're living in. Uh, Wanda freaks out and accidentally starts to choke all of them all at once. And then Wanda shoots a ray into the sky and opens up the hex. Kind of felt like an awesome He-Man moment, mm-hmm. like Pyro Grayskull vibes, totally. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, she has to close it back up as Vision and the kids start to fade. Uh, but by that point, Sword has infiltrated and kind of come inside the, the hex. Uh, Vision and Fission continue to fight and wind up at the library of all places, uh, which we now know there's kind of somewhat good reason for it. Uh, because uh, Vision says, uh, I am not the real vision, just a conditional conditional vision uh, and catches Fission's attention and he wants to know more. Uh, at the same time, Sword draws her guns and they're aiming at one of the kids. Agatha helps to neutralize them and Hayward grabs a gun and shoots at the boys. Monica does her best Neo impression and just like absorbs bullets. And I wish she would have leaned back a little bit more have been like totally Matrix on brand. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> but nothing but Matrix love, dude, sorry. Uh, I, I stand for the Matrix. Uh, <laughs> one sneaks by, but one of the boys stops it with, mag- with magic, who's the, I believe that's Tommy, I want to say. Uh, and then uh, Hayward runs for a vehicle and gets slammed by Darcy doing her best Fast and Furious impression. Uh, the visions, vision, and fission start to discuss the ship of Thesis. Yay. which is very appropriate for being a library. Uh, vision then touches fissions. It, fi, vision touches fission in the forehead. Whew, that was a, that was a mouthful. Wow, uh, a so mouthful. he can, 
so he can if he can access his memories. Uh, Fission seems to wake up and says, "I am Vision." Flies off. We never see him again. Yay! Um, and then Wanda witch slaps Agatha back to Salem days. Uh, Wanda sees the witches get up and come to her. Awesome, the ring impression, like the way those little movements were with their hands and stuff. I was like like awesome callback like early 2000 yeah. stuff uh agatha offers to fix everything if wanda will give her uh hand over her power to her uh wanda gets a red crown also nice hereditary impression there um and then uh agatha goes back to the, to the present they have a flying witch battle agatha seems to be sucking up all of wanda's power but Little do we know, Agatha is ready to harness the power and shoot it back at her when we find out that Wanda has been setting up runes all over the hex and that now, like, all of Agatha's powers are invalidated. We get the full Scarlet Witch amazing outfit. Um, and then Agatha mm. says, you don't, ha- you don't know what you've done. Wanda turns back Agatha into the nosy neighbor and we get one of the best lines in the show in the show where uh, Agatha comes back and goes, okie dokie, arty chokey. <laughs> you love that. God. <laughs> Which is um, priceless. Uh, the family walks back to the house as the hex recedes. Wanda and Vision say goodbye to the kids in a very touching scene. It was very, very nice actually when they put him to sleep. And then she turns around as she's walking to the bedroom and says, thanks for choosing me to be your mom. Uh, Vision and Wanda say their goodbyes in another well-written part of the relationship, I feel. Um, a wa- a Vision wants to know what he is. And Wanda says, the piece of the Mind Stone that lives in me, a body of wires and blood and bone that I created, and my sadness and my hope, but mostly you're my love. Even saying it, hard, man. Like the allergies, whew, kicking in. Uh, yeah, so Vision ends on, who knows what, what I might be next. We've said goodbye before, so it stands to reason we'll say hello again. Ends Wanda. Uh, and uh, Wanda does uh, a great Circe impression right before this, uh, mm-hmm. where she does the walk of shame, but with clothes on. Uh, sorry, I missed that one. Um, mm-hmm. And then uh, Monica and um, uh, Monica and Wanda have like their moment of just like, I get you. I understand what happened. Uh, yeah. And then Wanda flies off. Um, and then we get the post credit scene where we see Monica go into a movie theater, the Cornet, and then we find out that she's getting taken up to space to meet up with somebody, hey. mm, Nick Fury, Captain Marvel, who knows. Uh, and then uh, post post credit scene, uh, Wanda is in a cabin by herself, uh, learning how to use the Book of the Damned, while the kids are are, are heard in the background asking for help. Oof. Well done. Oof. Take a well earned break. All right. And I'm out, Phyllis. You guys carry on. Bye. <laughs> right. Um, right. So, uh, Dave. Yes. What was your favorite part of that episode? Is there one scene or one thing, one line, something that stood out for you and you were like, uh, I love uh, it? Probably. I don't know. Maybe it, it was one of maybe two or three things maybe um i did enjoy it when uh wanda started to use her powers more intelligently like she had up to that point all she'd really done is tried to blast agatha into oblivion and it clearly wasn't working um but then when she decides to actually disappear from view and then creep up behind her and then Uh, um try and scare her the way she did to the avengers in um in Age of Ultron, and then it started to be a bit more interesting than just blasty blast blast, don't blast me back, hey, stop blasting. <laughs> um, <laughs> even though it didn't work, uh, but then to have that scene where she's back in the Salem trials and she's trying to scare her with that experience from her past, mm. uh, I thought that was a bit more of an intelligent way for them to have that encounter. Yeah, that's a good uh, Yeah, uh, I did enjoy that too. I thought it was pretty... Um pretty cool and then yeah exactly I, I don't know if, i'm sure everybody noticed the, the way she went from behind it was like the very uh, same scene that happened with tony stark i thought it was pretty cool that yep. she went back in there and, and and used that as a turning point in the battle i thought it was pretty cool um i'm gonna go with the library scene between the, the visions yeah. mm. um that discussion i thought was amazing and the, the references mm. they used i thought was pretty cool also mm. Um, and you know, there's that throwback again to Edge of Ultron when he goes and touches the uh, vision. What do you call it? No, vision. 
Which one is which? I oh, know vision. Vision. Is vision. The right one. Wanda's vision uh, is vision. But, fake one. Vision is, is fake. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so but, vision. <laughs> yeah. But fission might now be vision. Is a problem. <sighs> it's well. This they're both well, a shit. Yeah. <laughs> at, at least at, I think at least that's what we're. Vision. Yeah. Well. We can only wish in that that might happen. Oh my god! <laughs> I, I need oh to walk my myself god. off the court now. I yes, need to walk we, off the court. we need we need to stop. Yeah. This. Uh, yeah. Twenty uh, second the... timeout. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. Go for it. Go. Um, yes, I, I thought that scene was was outstanding. I thought because of the the entire uh, battle that was leading nowhere, and then they ended it the only way Vision knows how to do things, which is rationally and and analyzing everything. And I was like, huh, how do you end a battle between somebody who's that rational? Well, being even more rational. Mm-hmm. Done. I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, great. See your reason. Um, yeah. JC, do you have one thing that um, you like? Uh, from, from a nerdy perspective, the library mm-hmm. scene, for sure. Um, but uh, just every scene that Wanda and, and Vision or Paul Bettany and, and Elizabeth Olsen are together, pretty much. Like also, all yeah. those scenes, I, I thought that just the chemistry came together like super well. It gave them a nice ending to their relationship or a, at least, or a new setup to the relationship potentially. Um, but just like, just how they interacted when they were together in those scenes. I, I, I enjoyed that more than the CGI stuff um, mm-hmm. in terms of like the, the witch battles and, and, and vision battles. Like I thought they were okay, but, but I thought those moments were pretty amazing. Yeah, they... they... The, the, again, I don't know, like you, you mentioned, the, all these scenes between the two of them, it's all, again, been written so well. Um, yeah. I, and I don't know how they do it. It's supposed to be um, a nerdy show with no emotion. It's just stuff going boom and, you know, <laughs> and yeah. there you go. And, you know, Ellie was crying for the last 10 minutes when they were saying goodbye. And I was like, oh, my God, oh God. they really... <laughs> Did she not see the uh, other vision that still exists fly away? I know, the I know, I know. The, the better vision flew away. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's, it's, I don't know how they do it every time. Well, um, how they do it every time. It's like suddenly they, they make you cry. Well, not me because, you know. Big, big I'm Tom. Cool. Big man. But yeah, yeah it's, it's just, it's just super interesting how they manage to do that. Um, it's, it's top three crying moment for me. <laughs> top three crying moments. Top three, easily. End game number one. End of Guardian Galaxy number two. Yes. Guardian Galaxy number two is number two, and mm. uh, and then this one's my third. Like cried in all three, not not as profusely as End Game. Like I can't hear the words on your left and still not shed a tear. Like uh, yes. every time, every That's time. I've seen you f- cried. That's oh yeah, cry. yeah, yeah. When he says on your on your left at the theater, I broke down. When I watched it at home, I broke down. I watched it later on with Theo or with, yeah, with Theo just like two weeks ago. Break down again. Every Tears time joy, on your right? left. Oh, I get ready to kick ass when I hear that. Me too. Like yeah. I want to punch something. <laughs> Fight <Yeah>. time. <laughs> get yeah. some. I, I, don't, I don't know. That's the point that, that did it for me for some reason. Because most people are usually in the Tony scene. I'm like, by that point, I was like, I, I was, I was out of tears by that point. <laughs> I was, I was done. Yeah. Um, now, on the flip side, equally, was there anything you disliked from that episode? Any scene that, or any 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 twist or anything that you went, eh, what are they doing? Hold my bear. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't mind going first, but it's the, the whole the whole Go. um the whole um not, I was gonna say Quicksilver, but the whole Bonner thing. Terrible. Um, Fietro. Terrible. I was just like terrible. So bad. Just no, so bad. Just no, so I, bad. I, so bad. Like why, <laughs> why, why are you doing that? Like okay, so, he's Ralph. Like uh, it's not so much the entire thing of like oh discovering that he's Ralph, um, but more of this thing like the whole boner thing. I was like, uh, I, I don't want that here right now. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't want that joke right here. Like mm-hmm. I want, I would just, I just want facts. I just want good stuff. I don't want, I don't want. Good, yeah. good on you, writers. You've, you've put in a boner joke in, in an episode. <laughs> But come on now. Yes. Low hanging this? fruit. Mm. Hey. Anything from you guys? <laughs> um, for me, I was a little bit disappointed in um Monica's role in the whole, yeah. Yeah. whole finale. Like I did say at the end of our last wrap up that it was gonna be very difficult for them to like fulfill everything that they need to fulfill within a, a single episode to tie up all the loose ends and everything and 
although they did tie them up, it meant that certain characters did suffer. And I think um, outside of just the combat being pretty substandard um, and some of the motives being a little off, um, just the fact that Monica didn't really do anything. Like yeah. she was part of that Ralph Bonner mm -hmm. bonus scene and it was just like, okay, so. Um, and then she stops the bullets on the, on the, the bullets that um, Hayward yeah, fires at the kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was expecting a slightly more, also a little bit more. I, I wasn't expecting a whole thing where she would show up, not necessarily in the entire fight, but like at least a little bit more of a, um, you know, like a, a role, like, like um, end of fight, you know, like the an outcome changing character. Like she would come mm. in, it's like something happens, it's got, it's it's not going the right way for Wanda, mm. and then she comes in, steps in, and goes, "Bang, this is me." A bit like Captain Marvel did. In Endgame, mm, yeah, that sort of thing. Like yeah. she's just there for thirty seconds, but then she changes the tide, right? Yeah, because she is really powerful. I, I get <laughs> that she doesn't really know what her powers are yet, although she seems to use them on the, the right way every time she needs to. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, uh, Wiccan could have stopped those bullets himself. Man, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we didn't oh. need her. Um, yeah, but they didn't leave themselves enough time to really do much more with her anyway so uh, to be fair it, the, the whole show is not about her it, yeah in, at the end of the day it's not it's not really about her but so you can't really yeah advertise what she's doing um, yeah and also i don't know what i would remove to give her more time true true right well unless you, you do an, uh, an hour and a half episode then yeah exactly this this more than ample exactly time to deal with that but yeah jc Anything you meh? Oh, there's a lot, dude. <laughs> but but you guys touched on two of the main ones. Mm -hmm. um, funny enough, the, the two takes you guys had, like I see my biggest disappointment is Monica, for sure. That is my biggest disappointment in the show in terms of being underwritten, introduced. Uh, I wouldn't change her involvement in the show, though. I'm glad that she's there. She's getting set up. But I wish they would have made it a lot more obvious that it was just a setup. Like I felt there was going to be a yeah. payoff for Monica. If they just made it very clear, it's like, oh, this is a setup. This is a setup. That's like, fine. Then yeah, she's getting set up for her own big thing later on. Mm -hmm. But it felt like it was going to be more about her. So that one was just really disappointing. Uh, Fietro now, I am totally on the train of like unnecessary. It's not even a disappointment. Like you could have done the whole show without him and would have mattered at all. Which, yeah. which is just, just, that's just like weak writing, I think. It's like think, the, trying to pay, like do fan service, but not do it well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that was, that was slightly off though. It was, it was like, oh my God, look, it's the guy from the, the, you know, the Fox movies. And you're like, oh, right, cool. Yeah. But, so yeah. as a general theme for my disappointment, it's mainly the writing, the arcs of the B characters. Like, I actually, I'm perfectly happy with how this worked out for Wanda and Vision in terms of their relationship. I think it did a yeah. ton. I saw, like, a progression of those characters. But yeah. all the B characters were underwritten. Like, mm -hmm. Wu's arc is like, oh, he gets to do a magic trick at the end. Like, <laughs> Darcy shows up in a car and then just bails. And mm -hmm. then, like, Monica has more screen time than the, to, than the some of the other B characters, but still feels like she had a B character ending because it was just like, oh, well, man, mm -hmm. stop bullets, mm -hmm. uh, good for her. Uh, mm -hmm. But with any good reason, I felt she should have had the final, the final uh, confrontation with Hayward. I think it was more appropriate mm -hmm. to her storyline mm -hmm. for her to confront Hayward rather than like Darcy mm -hmm. just like ram into him out of the blue, like kind of like. Yeah, because like, then, then you go full circle, right? It's like she, mm -hmm. she, she, she's there because of him, and then. She is now yeah. ending him. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the, the, yeah. she she still got the first post post end credit scene, at least. Yeah. So which you is can nice. sort of yeah. said as yeah, it's sending yeah. her off. She's set yeah. up for the next film. Yeah, yeah exactly. Which it, the, yeah, in terms of right. the series itself, she's she yeah, that was a bit weird, a bit weird of an ending. It's like, well, you've got the power to stop him. You've got a reason to stop him because you had your doubts. But then again, you need to put Darcy in somewhere. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna be. Like, I'm more disappointed of Monica's story arc than I am of not getting a Mephisto. Like that's all, like oh, yeah. that oh, when I when I, sure. when I look back, I'm like, sure. oh wait, damn! Like there was such potential in that storyline, and like, and I know we'll get it. I know we'll get it. It's just it felt like on a little more right now in Indeed. that last one. Yeah. So yeah, that's fine. Oh, I know. Um. Okay. Well, we, we we are limited on time, <laughs> like they were limited on time for episode nine. So we let's move along to let's move along to the Easter eggs part. Um, 
I know there were there were a couple, but again, because that episode was about resolution and, and getting um, you know, storylines, well the story moving and setting up a bunch of movies in the in the Marvel universe. I think they had little time to pack that one full of Easter eggs. So um do you guys have any? I think I've seen seen on the list. Um yeah. there's um I'll just take this time to say this now. That there's yeah. a few, there's quite a few in the episode, but I found that the as we got closer and closer to a resolution, the Easter eggs became less and less interesting. Yeah. Yep. Okay. They they were really just Easter eggs, as in like this is here and it's a reference to this. Yeah. And that to me is far less interesting than the Easter eggs were in the beginning when it was like, well, this is here. And it might mean this for the rest of the exactly. series. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whereas as we got more and more um, further and further into the story, it was like, well, yeah, this is just here for the sake of referencing something. For example, one of the characters in, I don't remember if it's the Wonder Years or one of those um, late 80s, early 90s TV shows was also called Bona. And that's- Oh, Easter really? Egg. Yeah. Yeah. One of the character's best friends was called Bona. And it's uh... like- Okay, you can nah. put this here. It's one of the shows that we reference for the thing, but so <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You, it could um, have been you could have been done without it. You could have just leave it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the like Agatha's boots laying in the car mm-hmm. after she gets hit by the car um, is a callback to Wizard of Oz, um, mm-hmm. which is again kind of one of the themes of the show with people entering a different reality and taking on different personas mirroring what's going on on the show things like that shout out shout out to ellie who instantly went hey that's the wizard of wizard of Oz stuff i went oh my god yeah well done Mm -hmm. oh and by the way in the same scene i think there's i don't know if it's an easter egg at all but like the 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 way she rams a car into agatha is the same way she rammed the car into iron man in captain america yeah uh, Civil War. Huh? There's yeah. that scene in the airport where uh, multiple Iron Man's, cars she pulls yeah, from the car park. car park. Bang. Yep, yep, yep. I don't know if that was an Easter egg for real though, but yeah, it was in there. Um, I think on a general Easter eggy note. A lot of people have been comparing this watching experience to Lost, right? Uh, where it's like, oh, Lost was like such about the Easter eggs mm. and whatnot. And it, and just in looking back at the show now, I'm like, it, it wasn't like Lost because it, Lost, you knew the Easter eggs were leading towards something, right? And in, in, in certain ways. And here, to, to your point, David, it's like some of them just feel like they're Easter eggs for the sake of being Easter eggs um, and not really like delivering something later on. Whereas I felt with, with loss, eventually the mystery behind some of those unraveled something else and you got plot yeah. progression because of those things. Whereas here, I don't feel like we got that. It was just like, tr- and it almost felt like an experiment in how can you load so many Easter eggs and totally <laughs> throw people off in every possible direction and then still see if they still like it. I don't know. I felt like now I'm, I'm yeah, questioning look, their Easter egg strategy. Lost, lost all the Easter eggs is, is literally for, well, most of it was plot progression you know that's yeah. what it was there for and it's like well there's that little thing there that's part of the um, egyptian mythology you know so, and stuff like that and so you, if you look it up you'll know where they're going with it but there's a lot of it in in one division which is just this fan fan servicing you know it's like here look at this there you go this is where it's for and it's it serves no purpose otherwise Correct. um but hey, like, like you, you know, I think Dave's got it one hundred percent correct. It's like at the beginning of the the first few episodes is literally trying to guide you into what direction they'll they'll they want to take this show. For, you know, not anymore at the end, like the last what episode seven, eight, nine. Let's say the last three. Yeah, last three. Like, four, nah. so. <laughs> yeah. Like you say, after episode six, you were just like, okay, yeah, let them do their things. You know, I'm not expecting anything. Mm. Um, and it's literally what happened with the last three the the mm. the resolution episodes if you will um anything else in terms of in terms of easter eggs i don't think so um i put the your magic advert in there um oh yeah uh which it's not an easter egg but it's more of a i don't know if that, that falls under the theories part of the of the episode but um i think that that mm. the the way 
um Ag- Agatha, I keep calling her Agnes. Agatha is using her powers. Is I think to me is the shark in the advert, the Your Magic advert, and the, the little kid on the island is Wanda, so he's sucking her, th- that life out of people, and that's literally what's being described in in the Your Magic advert. Uh, there, there is one that I found cool. Uh, I believe it's at the movie theater at the end. Yes. Uh, they're pl- at the movie playing is Ten Heiser Gate. Uh, which at first I didn't get Blade exactly Runner. the, the yeah. Blade Runner reference. I'm like, it's that last speech at the end, right? Of just mm-hmm. like a a a cyborg coming to terms with not existing anymore. In the same yeah. way we see Vision going through the here, I'm like, that one was like, called for. It. Get it? It's like it, it's not <laughs> it. it's not it's not for plot. It's theme. It's like mm. and that I'm here for all the time. Mm. Uh, when it's like, oh, the wine bottle has a big M on it. It's like now I'm kind of like. Mm. We got done, Jesse. We got done. Like, Come on, like th- we didn't need to do that then, and we definitely did not need Fietro. So <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh god, no. Oh man, it's turning turning into an episode, a, a, a episode bashing. The whole I know. Movie. I feel yeah, because so, I, like I do have doing... positive. I do have yeah, positive, positive things to say. Same, same. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we? In, in the spirit of talking about positive things, I think that the um, the, the portion we got on our, on our doc, shared document is the themes um, that is being talked about in, in especially in that episode, but also yeah. throughout the series. I think that's yeah. that's a positive thing. So the message yeah. um, within the entire show is well, it's 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 showing you the emotions humans are going through to cope with um, the loss of a loved one, right? Or you know, grief in general um but that's that's one part of it there's a lot of comment you know social commentaries also on on, on yeah. the role of tv and the role of women within tv and i think i think that's quite interesting so i'll i'll i'll, I'll just go with it because again it's a shout out to somebody on youtube who made a video and, and um, talked about those points and i thought that was very relevant to to wonder vision um when he was saying talking about the way the way TV is portrayed within Wonder Vision and how it's central to many people, many families' lives, right? You gather and you live your life around TV. Um, you eat dinner around TV. You have a social life around TV. You know, now th- there's a bunch of shows in the UK now where people are actually being filmed watching TV and you get their feedback. For, how's it called, um, David? I don't know if you remember. Um, oh, ah, yeah, that's the one. Well, Suchi, you watching somebody else watching TV and then they're talking over <laughs> and they're like, okay, well, there's a lot of one vision that reminds me of that. You know, they're watching TV and everything is centered around that um, sort of escaping reality, creating an um, alternate reality within your home, which is what Wanda was doing. Um, and in turn, um, the role of TV shows the evolution of television. Like it goes between, um, you know, black and white, uh, not only in a technical way, but it's like how it went from sitcoms and shows showing stuff happening around the family unit and then moving slower um having shows that are now centered around social life in a broader sense you know like people around the family and like extended family if you will yeah um but then within that the role of women uh, within tv shows so you have the 50s where it's like the woman's waiting for the husband the husband's going to work stay at home yeah. mom well yeah. stay at home wife more like so um then yeah. it goes into maybe more of a the 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 freedom women's freedom and deliberation through 60s and 70s um and then you've got a stay-at-home mom and then it gets into um the more independent woman role uh, towards the end so it's quite it's it's quite nice to see and also throughout the advertisement that you see um peppered around the show not not the last was there an advertisement in episode nine no there wasn't because it's no longer broadcasting yeah yeah correct um so you, you also see the, the evolution of adverts where it's like you know you stay at home mom you know you gotta cook for your kids and you've gotta deal with the kids and then he goes yeah. into well you know late much later on in the 2000 year old then that's all about medicine and how do you cope with everything by just taking nexus Drugs, you know, yeah. yeah so it's quite also a, try, a, good, a good um way to depict what's being sold at different areas so I thought that was cool. Um, do you guys have anything else like that to add on to that? Uh, uh, yes, go for uh, it. Okay. Um, yeah, just around the themes of grief um, mm. and 
uh, loss and dealing with loss and mental health as well, which is um, always uh, always an important subject, always something that you see uh, come up in various different areas. Um, and I think it was really dealt with in a very careful, um, a very well measured um, and a very effective way in this show. Um, we see the moments when as powerful as she is, she loses control or she can't quite do what she wants to do or she can't have what she wants to have. She couldn't take Vision's body, right? He, she was, he right. wasn't hers. Um, we see um, uh, things around um, the, the pain that the other members of the Hex feel is her pain and they explain they even explain the way they're feeling back to her, right? Yeah. And it's, mm -hmm. it's interesting because when you suppress pain, you wouldn't be able to articulate that kind of thing. But because they're feeling her pain rather than their own pain, they're able to articulate it to her in that last episode and say, no, 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 this is how we feel. Mm -hmm. We're getting yeah. nightmares and we feel low all the time and we feel this and we feel that. And she, in that moment, can't even hear them say it because for her to hear them say it she would have to accept that not only is she the one inflicting that on them but that's how she feels yeah and she's not ready to accept that that's how she feels um and in that moment yes. she ends up causing them more pain because she can't accept it for what it is yeah, um, some, somebody pointed out online there was like she uh, because she wasn't dealing with the pain she you know sometimes rather than dealing with your own personal issues in, and dealing with them personally Pro you end up taking it. it out on yeah projecting on some on other people and that's literally what they've done they're physically projecting pain yeah to them it's quite quite well done yeah I thought. absolutely um and it took also that um episode eight with agnes uh, her going back down memory yep. lane and facing all of the trauma that she's had in her life um one one after another right childhood mm -hmm. uh the bombs uh her brother dying um being held captive essentially um developing that relationship with vision and then dealing with his death as well um and that is also a, a big part of therapy often um although it has to be done in the right way going back through the trauma in the without really without you don't want to feel the pain again because uh, as a therapist you have to be careful not to um just drag it all up and then yeah. not deal with it <laughs> um yeah. and in that sense agnes wasn't the best therapist but <laughs> that's for the therapist to decide <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah what she did was at least get her to reflect and be self-reflective of what she had gone through and why she was feeling the way she felt why she might have done what she did um because up until that point she was hazy on it she yeah. uh, and i think she was genuine in that i think she had suppressed it uh, yeah man on the mental health note i mean it's it's surprisingly open about that subject for mainstream kind of like nerd culture media, right? It's it, it, it actually dives into that topic like full on, like unabashedly. It's not even like a subplot. It's like mm -hmm. the plot. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what I appreciate. So to your point, yeah, it's like the way they deal with like the, the, the levels of grief that you go through uh, i was listening to um, the director of the of the series talk about that and he said that they actually did research on like all the stages of grief mm -hmm. and found ways to build them into the show mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately I didn't go into more detail than that or i'd love to hear the next level down from it um mm -hmm. but the thing about it that catches me is especially the the to your point the townspeople feeling her pain mm -hmm. Whether intentional or not, I feel there's an interesting comment there about just what trauma does, where it tr we always feel like trauma is like for the person, but it really, it affects everybody around them, mm -hmm. right? It's like what, once trauma is there, it, the, the, the feelings that come of it impact others as well. And I thought that that was kind of a nice, clever way of like leaning into that subject because it's true. It's hard. And, and those people have now gone through their own trauma. 
And that's how mm. trauma spreads, right? At mm. the end of the day, right? We've seen it generationally. We've seen it sociodemographically, like from all mm. perspective, right? Like trauma will spread. Um, so I thought that, that, that the show tackled that subject in a very delicate way. And to your point about whether Agatha was a good therapist or not, it's like, it, for a therapist to decide, but it, it always felt like a very abrupt way of having someone deal with their trauma. It felt just like ripping off the Band-Aid mm-hmm. and that ultimately causes something to worse to happen, right? Mm-hmm. And, and that's what it felt like Wanda was being led through, of like just this very unkind way of going through a trauma because of the situation she was in. Yeah. I thought, I thought the one sentence that was very interesting, especially in the, in the, in the context of it, it being a Disney show, right? When um, one of the characters says, oh, uh, if you're not going to let us go, at least like, let us kill ourselves or something like that. Is that, is that mm, yep. 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 Like, Doc, I think, or... says that. Oh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's Deborah Joe oh, Ross Deborah. Oh, yeah. from, from, yeah. from the 70s show. Yeah. 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 I was like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> I actually went, okay, that's a bit dark for, you know, and, and it's actually, I thought that was, it's, it's a great scene. It's a great, yeah. it's a great, great line of dialogue. It's cool. But I'm um, like, within the context i was like whoa that's that's a bit dark for disney uh and and it's because we although we know that they're going through pain and feeling her pain that comment is the only time we really get to see or hear how bad it really is correct like it's because we had seen um, Agatha try and drive away, you know, saying she won't let me leave and stuff like that. Uh, we had seen the woman with the tear mm-hmm. running down her face, but like that, that's how bad it was. That's why that yeah. comment is in there. This is how bad it is. If, if you had lost your husband and um, lost your brother and had your parents uh, that house bombed as children and things like that, when you get to where Wanda is, that's how you're gonna feel. Yeah. You're gonna yeah. feel like this is too much pain for me to cope with. Maybe I don't wanna deal with it anymore. How can I end it? Yes. How yes. can I end it? And that's, yes. that's how bad they're feeling when they're feeling her pain. Correct. Mm-hmm. It, it really speaks to, to the whole concept of, of empathy versus sympathy. Those are things I kept thinking about throughout this. Cause, um, they're able to empathize with Wanda in a way that is very hard to do for most people. It's like, it, it's very hard to, to sit there and go like, I understand what you're going through. They're literally feeling what she's going through, but in the same way, it's like, cause, cause right now the buzz is like, we all need to be better empathizers. We need to get better at empathy and stuff like that. And like, yes, I, I'm 100% on that, on that mm-hmm. boat. But in this particular show, it shows also how if empathy is just allowed over a situation that's traumatic, it could end up being traumatizing to their person as well. Like that's why these things have to be handled by professionals, right? And of course that, that thematically doesn't matter for the show. Uh, but I, I kept thinking about that going like, ah, it's very interesting actually. It's like, that, that is, this is, a, this is validation for the whole mental health industry. Right. It's like, yes, you need someone that understands how to do this or else it'll just affects you. And it's kind of like jumping in to save somebody that's drowning when you don't know how to swim. Right, mm-hmm. it's like th- th- that's mm-hmm. basically what's happening to them, and mm-hmm. th- that's why they never felt any sympathy for her. Right, mm-hmm. it's like all they could do is understand her feelings. And they're like, we don't like this, and we don't even feel bad for you because you're making us feel like crap. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, the, the, just this is this is the part of the show that that I'm like looking back on and go like, I loved it. Like it's mm-hmm. really good. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it makes sense. It's 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 um, very deep subjects within. Uh, uh, that's the one thing that I, I don't ever remember having these sort of um, topics being talked about um you know especially again my upbringing is is pretty much revolving around video games but like i can't remember anything any of those topics being discussed or um referred to within a game growing up or within another yeah. comic or another uh there will be I'm, i just yeah. can't think off the top of my head I'm, I'm sure there will be but i don't think it would have been handled this well oh exactly or oh, maybe it was right. like peppered throughout but not maybe as a as a central theme for the mm-hmm. whole thing right um it, that's why I thought, I thought it was quite well done it's just it it really is dealing with it in a in a very tasteful way i thought yeah, Dave. I think you've got. Yeah, you've there got is something. a game. Yeah, <laughs> there, there is a game which is actually similar. I think it's similar to this, where 
Ah, I can't remember what it's called. I know um, Greg it's Miller loves recent. it. Um, they made a sequel that wasn't as good. And I can't remember. He used to talk about it. It's an RPG where something... Do- oh, and I do know Concrete Genie has um, themes of sure. um, yep. Yep. Uh, trauma in it. But um, there's another one, I think. Um, I just can't remember the name of it. It might even be on Vita where something traumatic happens like the main character's mother dies or something like Mm. that and then they are pulled into a world where they have to go on this quest to deal with blah 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 blah. but then the second the sequel has like none of the gravitas of the first one yeah um I think I know, I know what which which one you're yeah. talking about. It just, it's, I've never played it. it. I, I just know the name because he always used to bring it up. All right. Yeah, I, but again, it's it's yeah, it's it's not a vast majority or something that is as watched or beloved by as many people. I think that it's not not a, no. as wide audience. It's not the same. Yeah. Um, hmm. I don't know. Do. We want to move on. Yes, we do. Uh, there's one up. one thing that I want to bring up that's somewhat related to this. Um, there's a second theme that I picked up on only in this last episode that really solidify for me that is close to the mental health theme, but not the same. And and that's where I want to talk about like the ship of thesis part. Mm-hmm. Um, because I feel there's a huge theme now about identity. And if you look okay. at how, how, how your identity changes, right? So if you look at from a wander perspective, her identity changes because of trauma, right? Mm-hmm. She becomes a, a fundamentally different person than, than, the, than the Wanda, especially when we look at back at the Wanda that was a kid that they showed us. Like she's changed so much because of all these things, all those commercials are the things that have happened in her life that had led her to become this, right? And it's and it's a case of like, once we have trauma, it is actually part of us. Like it never truly mm-hmm. goes away. You just learn to accept that it's part of who you are now, right? Mm-hmm. And that changes who you are. And then for them to then tie that back into the ship of thesis about the question of who are we really if we're not really the same people? Like all of us don't have the same cells we had. I think it's what, mm-hmm. like every t- 10 years, you've fully changed cells or something like that. Then are we still really us, right? And 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 I think it, it further asks the question, like, does that actually matter in the case of vision, right? It's like, we now know we're going to get like OG vision, like the original mm-hmm. vision back in mm-hmm. somewhere other because like his memories are there. We, we now have the heart and the mind have come together in this new version of vision yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. right so it's like we're gonna get that back and is that really him and does it really matter if he didn't have those experiences with wanda that that's i think all i hope thematically they keep up with that because then the new vision he didn't go through that last scene with wanda when they said goodbye he never had that right so does the relationship just pick up where it left off when they when they see each other again because they will right? Inevitably. So there's a lot of identity stuff there that I think is very interesting um, that is tied into the grief conversation. Um, And especially with the two main characters, I thought that that was very clever. Mm. Absolutely. Well, it's, it's, isn't that also always what's happening in superhero movies, right? The, 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 um, their what's the name of it their origin stories is always about how to deal with trauma to become mm-hmm. what they are yes. um so yeah i think i think that one is what what, what strikes strikes me a lot is that the, the one that story is, is so sad compared to others you know it's like it's it's yeah. you know it's like if you go even on this the dc side you know batman his parents are shot but that's that one trauma he gets Mm. that defines the rest of his life right massive trauma obviously but that it's that's it but then other heroes like t- tony starks he gets captured and then he has a epiphany you know he goes hey you know that's traumatic he got he got he got um you know <laughs> he got almost killed in the desert and almost killed a bunch of times but then you know that's making him change his way of life and that's how he becomes a hero captain america is not really traumatic at all like he's trying to do a good thing but hey but i say that but he's at war (laughs) he's at war war. that is true he's just just a war (laughs) i mean controversial statement on captain america he doesn't have much of an arc 
he is fundamentally the same person at the beginning of MCU as he is at the end of the MCU, except for the fact that he finally gets the need that is set up in his first movie, which is just getting back to Peggy. Like when he yep. goes into the ice, he's talking to Peggy. That's a need that was set up like 18 movies beforehand that he finally gets in the last movie. But it's the same need. His needs never change, whereas Tony's never needs never changed. He, he needed to be a, a force for good for the world as opposed to a force for evil, which he was inadvertently. Um, that's why that payoff at the end, his sacrifice means more than if Captain America makes a sacrifice. Oh, of course, yeah, because he went from a selfish yeah. point of view of everything. Yeah, you know, totally. It's about him, self-centered to, well, you know, I'm taking one for the team. So, correct. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah uh, the other thing that Captain America goes through is Bucky dying. True, 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 true. true, true. Yeah. That's a good point. But yeah, saying that, wrapping that up, it's just, yeah, the Wanda story is just on another level in terms of, of um, how much can a person <laughs> really take, take. Um, before Correct. breaking and, and handling it, you know. Yep. I thought that was quite oh. scary. I nearly yeah. forgot. Ship of thesis. Not an Easter egg, but a through line connection that I thought was actually quite interesting. Mm. So we've talked a lot about, or at least the world has been talking a lot about loss lately. Because, because it has such so many parallels with the Easter egg kind of like approach with the sh- with the show. Yeah. Uh, so as it turns out, as I remember, J.J. Abrams was a producer on Lost. J.J. Abrams wrote a book called The Ship of Thesis. Right here. Ah, there you go. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, really and I was like, ah, oh, that's a that's a cool nerd. Oh, dude, that that book is so good. So ridiculous. People like, don't understand. I enjoyed People it. don't understand. <laughs> The details it, in that, this. That, that, just for anybody out there who hasn't read it, it's a very fascinating format of writing in that you get a book and the book is written out as a story. And it's the story of the ship of thesis. Um, and it's about like these, I think like pirates or something that are off at sea or like yep, they're having yep. an adventure out in the sea and stuff. But in the margins of the book, two people are writing back and forth to each other. They keep checking out the book from the library and they keep leaving like little bits of research to uncover mm-hmm. this other mystery that's happening in the book. So as you're reading the book, you're reading the story of the book, but you're reading also the story of the two people connecting through writing in the book. And you're getting a mystery as well. You're trying to decipher through the clues yeah. in the book. Dude, it is like three levels too deep of like detail for a book, but it works kind of interestingly well. Like I, I, it's one of the th- things I very like have a very good memories of reading. Like I really enjoyed that book. Yeah, that, and you're the one who recommended that to me. Um, and I remember I was like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a go. But then when I think you showed oh, it to dang, me, and I was yeah. like, because the, the details and everything is like, it's like, it smells like an old book. It's printed like an old book. It's got a <laughs> bunch of stuff in there. It's like, how much money have they spent on that? Well, and then and again, you, it's a great book. <laughs> it's and, great and it's a crappy book to give to someone else if you're not organized, <laughs> because if you don't put all the things that are inside the book back where they go, it ruins the yeah. story for the next person. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, and I didn't, I didn't pick up on that until like halfway through the book. I'm like, ah, I messed this up. <laughs> so I don't know you, where the book is anymore. You cannot um, buy this secondhand on, off eBay because there's going to be yo, stuff missing, right? And this yeah. is literally something you have to buy new, uh, which is what I did. Uh, yeah, so... Really look at that. It's turning into a recommendation episode. Buy it. Go buy this. <laughs> yes. Yes, 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 yes. Well, actually, hang on. Go buy this because um, this is where I got confused. Uh, so oh, yeah, I, the I the book's actually that. called S. Yeah, it's not yes. called... Um, Good point. Yeah. It is called S. Yes. Because um, I, I, it, it took me a while. I, I didn't ask you for that, that piece of information when I was looking for it. I was like, oh, it's called Sheep. And then I was keep, keep going back to the, old, the, the actual book. And I was like, eh. yeah. but a bunch of studies around the Sheep of Thesis. And I was like, no, that's not what I'm looking for. Anyway, digressing big time. <laughs> that's what I'm here for. Um, so I think I want, I want to wrap this up by... Because um, we, we usually go through all the questions, right? Now, like, what yeah. do we think is going to happen? Or what do you think this meant? Yeah. But I think this wraps up within, or it could go into the, the review of the, the entire series review that we wanted to yeah. sort of go to go through. And I think JC had a good um, good way of explaining that was the Little little White, Li- little White Lies review, which is what one of the magazines you like to. Yeah, they're like a, to, right? a, a movie magazine in the UK. Yeah. Um, it's actually it's quite it's, it's 
it's it's a nice magazine. So if you yeah. subscribe to that, and then it's getting into a recommendation. It, it, it's like the, the the type of magazine that if like if you want to hear someone just like shit on everything you like, yes, that's the magazine to do it because they have yeah. such a critical eye. But when they elevate something and go like this is amazing, it's usually amazing. Like yeah, it, it's one of those right? like some things are a little too uppity about things <laughs> but they have good reason because they're they're all very well read in terms of like film stuff yeah. but yeah so that's they go, that's they go to the extremes they go to the extremes it's extremely bad or extremely good that's what yeah. they do um so the way you wanted to talk well you wanted to set that up is um the, the three questions how did you feel before you watched it mm-hmm. how did you feel when you were watching it and how did you feel about it now that it's done yeah. so i guess expectations versus reality <laughs> it's what yeah. we have right here right i think with this show it's super important actually mm. and and it's <laughs> so the, the, and this is where i want to go this is this is the part of this episode where I, really, I was really um looking forward to because that's the main well the main the main bits the, the, the main articles i've seen right after episode nine dropped it wasn't so much about the episode it was about the expectations and what really happened like, and what what was given by Marvel and, and how they justified it and how they were like, man, well, you can't, we couldn't do certain things. And the, the way, and, and like you said before, I think we started recording this episode, JC, with, with the um, the director of WandaVision saying that, oh, he was looking at people and their reactions to certain things that were actually turned out to be nothing. They were not, 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 not important at all within the entire story. Um, confirmation that the aerospace engineer meant nothing (laughs) exactly there's a bunch of stuff like that actually turned out to be nothing because they were not meant to be anything they were just there to move the plot forward Um, so you know let's start with this how what were your expectations before it all started who wants to get take that one should I jump in Dave go on Dave um yeah, there's two stages even to that one question. Mm. Um, when I heard about a One Division show, um, I wasn't all that interested, to be honest. Same, same. Um, and then when I saw, I think the first trailer, which just showed like the '50s and '60s TV show stuff, still wasn't interested. And same. it wasn't until they showed the final trailer where they showed like the the difference between real life and the TV show that I thought, oh, okay, there's actually going to be something here. Um, I think there was also a scene in that trailer which never came to fruition, where Vision, they're standing in the dark, the two of them are standing in the dark, and Vision says something like, this is our home and we have to defend it, Uh, which Uh is similar to the line that he says with the kids at the end, but it's a completely different scene. Yes, yes, Um, I noticed that too, yep. (laughs) Yep. Uh, So then I was like, oh, okay, something's going on here. maybe it's something she's not in control of they're messing with reality this is going to be interesting i'm ready to dive into this and see see what it's about that that's how i how i felt um just as the show began all right hold that thought jc expectations um similar actually i wasn't i wasn't excited when they said wandavision but not for the idea of it but because i kept looking going like so we're going to get, uh, what is it, a Black Widow mm. and Scarlet Witch, both of which are characters that have, in my expectation at that point, like they've had their moment. So why do I want to have, hear the backstory? Like I, even, I, I'm still like juries out for me on, on, on Black Widow Black because Widow. as much as yeah. I, I, the idea of that movie is very interesting to me and I wish it would have happened earlier. It's kind of my view with that movie and it feels going to be too late and I don't know how it's going to tie into like the next phase so let's see um but that's the part that bought me out of was like i don't see the point in these now it's less and less about the show and less about the timing uh so that was one thing but on the flip side when i saw the first kind of like uh the concepts for it about like it was about like uh doing 50s 60s 70s 80s tv i was there for that like that actually got me very excited um and then and then when i saw the kind of the final trailer that was like i'm in like totally in and that's where i felt like that expectation got paid off whereas like if i go back to my original expectations of just like i wonder if they're going to do that sitcom stuff well and if it'll mean anything i'm like yeah i'm happy interesting um so for my part i think that this 
pretty much copy and paste from what they've said. Um, when it got when it got announced, I had zero interest in it. I was like, I'm, and and again, it's a mix between what you guys both said, which was okay, no expectations, nothing. Nah, doesn't speak to me because I thought the the the, the story arc of Wanda. Yeah, all right. We, I, I I don't need for more. Yeah, she's very powerful. She almost single handedly killed Thanos in that game. Yep. That was cool. So maybe there's a little bit more there. But then at at, at that point, I was like, yeah, I don't. I, I, I'm ready to move on to other superheroes. I'm ready to move on to other people taking with their own takes. But I didn't realize that, yeah, actually, Wanda, we've not seen her as the, as the um, uh, you know, the, the witch that she really is. Um, but then when, when they first, they first dropped the, the, the original trailer, I was like, ah, I don't want that. Like, what's this weird stuff? Like, black and white comedy? Yeah, it could be fun, but... Uh, a bit odd and then like you guys uh, did when the final trailer dropped i went ah yeah now, now we're talking but also what um created a bit of interest to me was um i think kevin Fargi when he, he talked about this the tv series in between the movies said that oh there's going to be a bunch of stuff happening in those tv series make sure you watch them otherwise you might um you might miss something important in those those episodes and links when to you, the movies. When it links to the movie, and when it comes to the movie, you watch that, you'd be like, huh? What? what? Did I miss something there? And it, it links to his bank account as well. Let's be honest. And it links to his bank <laughs> That's why he said that. It links to, uh, it's, it links to Jennifer in accounts. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. Steve in finance is like, yes. Um, um, so, but that, but then also that got contradicted literally yesterday or a couple of days ago when he also came out and went, no, nah, we never said that was going to be important in there. You know, you can go watch the movies and still not watch the series. You'll be fine. I'm like, no, come on, man. Just don't, don't, don't change it halfway through. You know, we just started and let's just don't, don't, don't go with that. So yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting. The expectations that, but it also in terms of expectations, it, it, there's a lot of stuff that happened after that. And I think we sort of contributed to those expectations but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it um, in a sec. Um, now, moving on from that, how did you feel whilst watching it? Did you get excited, and, Dave? And that's, yeah, and that going straight off from your last comment there, um, I, I mean, it's all documented in these episodes yep. we've done. <laughs> um, I was intrigued at the beginning. Um, they did the the two episodes, which were all TV back to back, um, and then at the end of the second episode, we get that small reveal with uh, Agent Frankie and his his B yep. suit popping out, and then the rewind um, and the pregnancy. <laughs> and um, at the time, I had thought we would have seen more of reality by then, yeah, um, because I thought, and maybe this should have gone in the last segment, but my expectation was that the the show would end sooner and we would be brought into the real world sure. not realizing okay. that the real world was the show essentially yeah and i think yeah. until the reveal in episode four um i needed that to be resolved right i needed that to be resolved so that i would stop thinking that we're gonna snap back to reality and yeah. have this regular uh, Marvel story. Um, but then I think as it went along, um, I was down for what they what the show was, right? I, I was totally in. I was totally sold on it. Um, the idea of going through decade by decade um, and having a balance between show and uh, the characters discovering what's really going on. Um, the pinnacle of that to me was still um, vision breaking character and yeah. fighting, well, arguing with uh, Wanda yeah. through the credits yeah. uh, at the end of episode five. Um, yeah, that was just awesome for me um, to marry those two worlds in that way. Um, and then, yeah, and then I think by the end of episode six, I was a bit disappointed because I realized that all of our theorizing and all of our... Um, story crafting and um predictions and everything i think had gotten a bit too grandiose <laughs> <laughs> and i kind of realized that actually okay if if this is what the show is then it's not going to be 
what we think it's going to be. It's not going to be as big and as dramatic and as um, uh, it's not going. The implications aren't going to be as huge as I expected. Yeah. Uh, they would be so you, by the end. You of got it. to the same point I'm right now, but yes. three episodes early. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Wait, wait. So you're saying that Falcon and Winter Soldier are not going to track down mutants? <laughs> no, <laughs> they still might. I still, still might. might. I'm still holding on for hope, man. Holding Let, on for hope. Let's build it back up again. Maybe Ralph Boner's going to be in that too. Maybe he's Mephisto. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm not going to go back and listen to the old theories because we had some bonkers ones, man. Yeah, <laughs> Chathon. Chathon. He's on his way. <laughs> he's definitely... Nightmare. He's a rabbit. He's a rabbit. <laughs> Night- nightmares everywhere. They said they were having nightmares in the last episode. Mm. <laughs> oh, no. And, and, it's and never over. The twins end with going to sleep. Mm. Having nightmares. nightmares. Oh, nightmares. my God. You know, um, Kruger about it. Yeah. AC, how did you feel watching it then? The same than uh, day, slightly? Oh, can I just say before we move yep. on? Sorry, JC. Yeah, go for it. Um, yeah, go for it. But once I did realize that and accepted that it wasn't going to be this huge, huge thing, it's going to be a Sorry. TV show with a TV mm-hmm. show scale. Um, I was quite happy with the way that, that they proceeded and the way that it ended. Once I accepted that, okay, Agatha's the villain. How are we going to preclude? Different. How are we going to conclude this? Um, I, I was quite happy with with the show in general and how it how it ended. Okay. <sighs> Yes, a lot of similar thoughts um, in that, to sum them up, as I was watching the show, I caught myself initially enjoying it a lot, but as a consistent theme throughout the whole series, I got to say, like, I had a better time talking to you guys about it than sometimes Mm -hmm. watching the show Um, because I put such heavy expectations on it. Like, Mm -hmm. I, I just went too deep into like no it could be this it could be that could that and 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 funny enough as i ended the show i kind of th- i thought like hmm there's a line at the in the last in the last uh, episode where i believe it's monica goes like they'll never understand the sacrifice you made and 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 i feel like that <laughs> applies to us like our fans will never know the sacrifice we made and like not totally enjoying the show because we were analyzing it too much for the sake of you followers, our 1,000 followers, this is all for you. Plug. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, but no, but, but that's serious. Like, I, there are reports that I'm like, I wish I would go watch it without the expectations because I think there's some episodes I'd have enjoyed a lot more, especially like when she walks up to aeronautical, aeronautical engineer and there's nothing. That was <laughs> such a letdown episode for me. I was 100% positive that something was going to happen. I'm like, but going back to what you said david like but by the time i accepted that and then came back to the theme that originally got me interested which is one the sitcoms and two mental health Mm -hmm. totally enjoyable Mm -hmm. once i got back to those themes i I started to enjoy the show again that's me um yeah it's funny because you sort of you guys sort of jumped already about with the last the third part of this um, review thing we're doing which is how did you feel about it now it's done Uh, naturally i think we, we, we you progress there because I'm I'm the same. Like I was going through it and watching everything, and then fully embracing the nerds and, and everything that was floating around every single episode on the internet, and watching those YouTube videos, listening to other podcasts, and going, "Hey, yeah, that guy's got a point." But then it's sort of, um, t- I, I I I got lost in one thing. It's just like I forgot that it was Marvel and 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 something I've been repeating myself, and I got sort of ignored it myself. There's like they not they, they inspire themselves they'll take um they'll take characters out of the comics and they'll sort of remodel them and making those characters and those storylines very easily digestible for the wider wider audience that may not be well versed into anything that is you know nerdy you know they they, they want to address people like and i'm not saying that in a bad way like people like my wife who's not They've never grew up reading a comic or never had any understanding of the entire world as uh, the Marvel Universe or DC, anything that is nerdy. Um, so this this is their target audience. And they're not going to throw in a bunch of people that, you know, again, not being uh, <laughs> talking bad about people like us, like, you know, like nerds. They're not going to cater entirely to nerds and say, hey, look, this 
cathons in there. Mm. Um, so that, that leads me to another point, which is that um, the role of the internet and the role of um, the, what, yes. what now, because one thing that, one reason why I enjoy going back to Lost was the role of the internet with Lost, because that was the first bit of, um, the first videos that were released about analyzing Lost and what it means and what that takes, and what, you know, the, the, all those Easter eggs and where, you know, where those characters are coming from, where they're going. But I was, I felt was done slightly better because there wasn't an entire, you know, trove of comics to draw information from. That was like literally like, this is the sh- from the show. This is what mm. we know. This is what we think is going. Mm. There's so much going on in the Marvel universe <laughs> <laughs> that it's very easy to get your expectations and um, uh-huh. not even your own expectations. They're like other people's expectations, the internet's expectations yeah. drawn into the way you enjoy the show. You know, it's like mm. suddenly it's like, well, I've read somewhere, you know, Spider-Man's going to drop in episode nine. They're like, oh, shit, that makes sense. Because you you convince yourself, you, you talk yourself into it. <laughs> and it's like, and it sort of messed up my enjoyment of episode nine, for example, because I was convinced mm-hmm. Doctor Strange will drop in. Mm-hmm. And when he never showed up, I was like, huh? <laughs> this is the, you know, I, I, I was actually slightly annoyed, um, pissed off, mm-hmm. whatever you want to say, and, and disappointed at the end of episode nine. I was like, huh? Like the, I thought the battle was too short. I thought the, the pacing of the show was completely messed up. The, the episode was a bit off. Mm. Um, and I was like, ah, the, the, it's a bit weird. And 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 he actually got in the way of the um, this, the ultra sad ending, which is literally, again, vision goes away and the kids go away. And it's like the, the emotional part of it completely went whoosh, over my head <laughs> because I had those expectations set, well, partly by myself, but also because of everything that we, every single episode we've released for the last eight nine weeks and other people's content online it was like damn you know it's like they're gonna go into the, that you know one division directly goes into um what was it spider-man 3 and um, doctor, doctor strange. strange 2 and stuff like that and you're like oh man so that means those characters are gonna drop but no <laughs> no why should they drop they're not gonna drop mm. they, they you know it's not a big production like a like a crossover film with every single adventure you can think of. No, it's not that. It's, it's a TV series about Wanda and Vision. Mm. They've already made an effort, you know, again, quote unquote, an effort with having Monica, having uh, Photon yeah. or whatever she's going to be called. It's like, yeah. they've introduced one more character. They've introduced two. You know, you've got mm. Agatha Harkness. You, uh, mm. You've got actually four. You've got the kids. They are meant to be big characters at some point. So why would they go back and get those trends? So the, basically, the the, the 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 entire thing of those expectations sort of destroyed my enjoyment of episode nine. Mm. Whereas any other, I think, TV series like the last episode, you're like, oh god, yeah, give it to me. I want to know the ending. And whatever is usually um, broadcasted to you, you're like, yeah, that was a good last episode. I enjoy that. And, it took me watching that a second time to actually enjoy it, knowing what was going to happen. Um, and once I, I watched it for a second time, I went, yeah, that was a great thing. And then thinking about what happened over the course of those nine episodes, it's like, damn, actually that, that TV series was, that, that series was brilliant. You know, it was a brilliant, extremely well done, extremely well produced. Mm-hmm. Why should I be mad? <laughs> Why should I, be yeah. mad? I shouldn't be mad. It was actually great. Yeah. Ex- nerd expectations <laughs> it's like we we get too deep into it yeah, yeah the, for sure. and that's that's why i think it's interesting what you were saying about um the director and kevin Fagg is saying well no you guys looked into it way too much you guys should stop leaning into those books it's it's funny you reference other other shows because i feel like that's what happened with get out as well i don't know if you guys read all yep. the theories and fan theories about the film get out um, and then loads of them, some of them were true, but loads of them were shot down by um, by the director. Um, and then also um, Game of Thrones, I feel like telegraphed the fact that they weren't going to be able to tie up everything in a nice neat bow, right? Mm-hmm. We knew there were certain things we were going to get with Clegane Bowl. We knew um, certain characters were going to die and stuff like that. But... Um, one of the things that I realized then um, is that I actually don't like doing fan theories and going through <laughs> all of the 
different things that can happen, partly because um, it's almost like a spoiler for me. Like if I, mm. if I think something might happen, I will, I, I don't know. I, I like to think that I think like a storyteller. I've always sure. liked writing yeah. stories as a kid. So if I sit down and look at all of the different possibilities, I feel like if someone presents me with a theory that can easily fit into one of those probabilities, and I think it's then going to happen, and then it happens, it's just the same as someone telling me, this is what happened. Yeah. yeah. Right? Just, just the idea of the theory um, being out there and becoming true kind of spoils the surprise for me. Um, so I'm kind of glad, like, I didn't know that Vision was in West Coast Avengers, for example, White Vision. Um, yeah. Because if someone had said that, I don't know how that was missed, by the way. <laughs> but if someone had said that, I'd have been like, oh, yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. That's what yeah. the weapon is. And then when they revealed it, I would have been like, yep, yeah, okay, it's it's himself. That's who he's acting next to and blah, 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 blah. Like, it, all, all the pieces would have just come together and it, it wouldn't have... Um, it wouldn't have had the same payoff as when I realized, oh, like she didn't take the body. <laughs> she didn't take the body. Like, do you guys realize she didn't take the body, guys? <laughs> 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 She's leaving. <laughs> right? You don't get that same payoff. Um, yeah. So I, I guess you've kind of answered it, but my question would be, do you think that it actually ruined your experience? I know you said you watched it again to get the emotional payoff from certain things, but would you say it actually ruined your experience or lessened, no, it, maybe not ruined, but lessened it, your experience? Yes. So it lessened the experience at the very moment when I watched it the, for the first time. Like the, it, it wasn't, so there, there was two stop, like I, I, I differentiate that both of them, like there, there was two sort of expectations. There was the expectation, for example, before End, end Game came out, right? But my expectation wasn't as in, oh, I expect to see this and that happen. It was more mm -hmm. excitement. And finally, I expect the story to end. Mm -hmm. That's, the, you know, if, if that if I make myself clear there. There was expectations for me in One Division, which was I expect Doctor Strange to come in mm -hmm. and somehow have a role in this. And that sort of ruined it for me because he was like, well, if I don't see Doctor Strange, I'm going to go mad. Which I didn't go mad at all, but it was just <laughs> extremely disappointing. So I was expecting him to show up. I, I wanted him to show up, and and I also, you know, as much as I said the the internet expectation mm. um, ruined it, not ruined it, it, made the experience not as fun or as enjoyable as it should have been. I think there was also a, a role for Marvel and the actors. You know, it's like but if you see that on, on our doc, the, the list of questions I've put is the same thing. It's like you know. Um, Paul Bettany trolling, you know, was sort of a dick move. Mm. Was it a mm. dick move? Um, mm. Elizabeth Holton also telling that there's going to be a Luke Skywalker level cameo in the last episode that was trolling as well, right? Um, so they, they've leaned into this thing where it's like, oh, we, we want to interact with the fans, but they are, to me, in, certain, to certain, in a certain way, they went slightly too far. Because they raise you expectations. Know, yeah, because yeah. they raise expectations. If it was something slightly smaller, I'd be like, okay, yeah. cool. But you know that most people like us will, will look at Paul Bettany's you know, sentencing on court and say, oh my God, you know, Al Pacino, like I said. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take that L. I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, but you know what I mean? It's like, uh, it's it's that sort of thing that I, I, saw, I thought also wasn't, at the, end of the, at the end of it, wasn't really that clever from them. Like it could have been done better. Like, or at least not, don't say anything. Like, do what they all do now. It's like, well, if I say anything, I'll, I'll get fired. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was instructed to them to say something just to tease mm -hmm. people and get the show talked mm -hmm. about. You know, maybe it's, it was that. Surely it was that. Um, uh, it was slightly, it's a, like, not looking back at it, it, it feels slightly mm -hmm. disappointing because it's like, yeah. well, you know, and you, you know how. Like people like us, people that, that the audience that watches those shows, like they're ultra passionate about those shows and those characters. So it's it's a bit, it's not a dangerous. You know, there's not nobody's gonna die over it. But you know what I mean? It, it, this it goes, the 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 excitement goes overboard really quickly with yeah. um, our type of fan. It's, it's the same thing. Like 
maybe maybe go the other way but yeah it, it's oh, the the overall feeling towards my my overall feeling towards the series that but one the vision as a series like it, I, I think it's great i think it's one of the best thing that's that's been done in recent years in terms of um tv series but the ending was a little bit spoiled by everything we just talked about that's that's my that's my take on it so, so it sounds like we've moved into like our overall feeling after watching it right mm-hmm. um and this is not an original thought by any means this is a shout out to uh, scott thomas and infinity pod um he mentioned something i thought was very interesting i want to talk to you guys about he yeah. said this show is a litmus test for what we want as fans from marvel yes and i a hundred percent agree with that take or i'm like oh yeah because this is the closest we now get to what the comics feel like, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because you get the big crossover and after the crossover, there's not, there's not a immediate crossover right after that it gives us a mm-hmm. bunch of people. We go back into each person's stories and they deal with the implications of the crossover in their stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And those stories also will not necessarily like cross over to anybody else until the next big crossover event, right? Mm-hmm. And sometimes you get cameos and stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. But but this takes us into that format to a certain degree. This, this was a Wanda story. Was and yeah. still is and and we made it something that it was not <laughs> as fast exactly. Right? exactly and 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 that to me is interesting it's like do we want all these stories to be this other thing right it's like spoiler for a potential future episode but do we want to be like the snyder cut crowd right where it's like mm-hmm. no no no. this is what we want from justice league and this mm-hmm. is what you're going to give us from justice league mm-hmm. versus this is what it is Right. And do we like it or not? And this is clearly a show that, to your point, Tom, was aimed not only at the general audience, but at the nerds, Mm -hmm. for sure. And and the reaction from both sides, I think, will be very interesting how Marvel takes that feedback and creates the next round of shows. Right, yeah. because they might not go as Easter egg heavy, or they might totally lean into Easter egg. Because at the end of the day, whether we appreciate it being trolled or not, it got them all the PR in the world, and everybody tuned into this. And how many people stayed up making YouTube videos the next day about <laughs> it? Right. So, so clearly it was advantageous. So I, I'm curious to see what this means. What this show is clearly crawling, so something else can run. And I'm curious to see what that shape takes, like how that next show runs. But I, so. I, I don't think this show crawled. I actually think oh. this show ran. And I, I, I think Agreed. Exact, you're exactly right in what you're saying about it now taking on sort of like a comic book like um, Phase 4, taking on like a comic book like um, Shape. Shape, yeah, <laughs> yeah. For want of a better term. Um, yeah. All comics are different, right? Correct. Yeah. They have different writers, they have different um, illustrators, they have different, they take different stories, different characters, and they can take them in completely different directions. There can be a Silver Surfer comic uh, with a completely different design theme mm-hmm. and everything to a Ms. Marvel comic, for example. Yeah. And I think that's what this is. I, I don't <laughs> think, um, I, I think WandaVision is going to be too different to what comes after it yeah. for it to be um for it to be I, I i agree it's a litmus test but i also don't think that it's going to necessarily inform what happens in the other shows because they're different shows they're just different shows and and you i mean there might be easter eggs here and there there's always been easter eggs in the movies but i've never dissected any of the movies the way i've dissected yeah, <laughs> the tv show right yeah. um so I uh, yeah I'm I'm not sure if it will necessarily inform what they do hereafter, mm-hmm. because again that's another set of writers, another set of directors, producers, mm-hmm. all with their own uh, visions. Hey, hey. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> well done. Um, yeah, and that all want to take the particular story that they're telling and the characters that they're using in the directions that they want to take them. Yeah. No, so, so actually, as you said, you're right. You're actually 100% right. I think the analogy of run and crawl wasn't quite right. This is more of, a, of an, I still stand by, this is an experiment. 
that will, will, will show us how weird Marvel is willing to get. Because this biotech yeah. purpose is it falls into the weird bucket, yes, right? Yes. And yes. and and I've I've always been one of the people who are like I want less CGI battles and I want more of the weirdness. So like I want to lean into more like the Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm. Funny enough, I when I say that, I usually say Guardians of the Galaxy and Doctor Strange because they're two of my favorite mm. movies that they've made. Mm. And I'm like lean into that stuff a bit more, and we got it. Mm. And that's why I'm kind of like questioning, going like, ah, was this the right one to get all like nerdy about it? Because I feel like I would have enjoyed it a bit more. So yeah, for me, it was lessened, but not worsened necessarily like i didn't think it was a bad show i just felt like if i would have just got it and accept it for what it was mm. i would have been looking for the easter egg but instead like stuff like um like to your point tom the end i think yeah. it would have been a really nice touch to bring the sitcom format for the end like i heard from the director that they actually had 10 episodes originally and they collapsed two and i bet you it's the last one um, because there's a lot shoved into that last episode. Mm-hmm. Um, and if they would have brought us back for like one more 30 minute episode, that's actually a farewell episode. So I will never forget the last episode of the fresh Prince, for example, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. I won't forget like the last episode of cheers and stuff like that, where it's like, literally it's like they turn off the lights and walk yeah. off the stage. Yeah. And I would have loved that moment of just like Wanda turning off the lights and just walking off the stage in the sitcom format. Mm. as a way of like and this is the end this is closure to to, mm. to the journey i've been in right and you can still have all your stuff happen mm. but that, that those are the things that now thinking back on like that's actually what i should have cared about instead of just like are we getting mutants which i was <laughs> too hung up on <laughs> yeah. well, so, it's, yeah. it's funny yeah. it's funny you said that we, we all had that one thing we all kind of um you know cl- clinging on to <laughs> it's like you wanted your mutant i wanted my my doctor strange <laughs> you want exactly. my, you wanted Mephisto. The, the uh, yeah <laughs> i wanted my nightmare yeah you know I, I, i've shifted all of my Mephisto um theory into football right now i'm saying that liverpool made a faustian <laughs> um agreement with Mephisto they won the league last year now they've lost six home games in a row having not lost a home game in two years that's it Mephisto (laughs) he's a fly on the wall in that dressing room I'm telling you it's it's, well it's because Mephisto's too busy checking out what Wanda's up to I forgot (laughs) about that (laughs) god um so yeah, m- m- moving forward, I think it's going to be interesting to see the, the differences there with um, Falcon now. Um, I'm actually yes. slowly, slowly recovering from the, um, one, the whole WandaVision thing and, and getting my mind just right to watch uh, Falcon. So I might, I might actually go back and watch you know, Captain America Civil War and a bunch of that um, just to get my, my brain onto the right wavelength, I think, for that one. And I'm hoping it's not going to be as um, theory heavy and, and uh, Easter eggy, as you like to say. I, I, I think it's going to be a lot more battles, but also a lot more jokes, you know, like dudes jokes, you know, lads yeah. humor. Yeah, I, I think the one thing I do want them to, at least even if they don't make it a big theme, I at least want them to hint at some kind of future um, uh context of uh sam wilson being captain america i, I want to see some sam wilson's captain america um either in the show or um leading to it him leading to yeah. Yeah. leading to that because i think that would be a really uh powerful story to tell uh right now so to be funny you mentioned that because that's the only expectation i have of the show is that how no expectation as in I want to see him dress as Captain America and that no, that's not what I'm saying it's like or else what I'm <laughs> saying is that as as in expectation as in I would like them to start talking about that how he's trying to fit into that role how he's thinking about trying to fit into that role uh, and how the the world is around him and and yeah. maybe have a, a couple outings and see how people react to having a black Captain America. That would be very interesting to, for me. I, I, that's what I'm expecting from it. Like, if you can have that, that'd be great. Yeah. If yeah. not. And also, I would add one other thing that I am somewhat expecting for Sam's character to develop the leadership skills to yes. bring back the Avengers, right? I almost feel like this is a show that begins to tease or possibly even begin to assemble the Avengers again. And mm. I would hope that it's based on Sam. 
Um, because the thing about Captain America is that that's probably like, it's a character I generally like, but I don't find a compelling arc to him mm-hmm. because he was always good. He, he was just born mm-hmm. good. He's good. He will always mm-hmm. do the right thing. That's just mm-hmm. who he is. He's basically Superman, right? It's like always stands for truth, yeah. justice in the American way. Like that, that's what he's doing. Yeah. Exactly. Whereas Sam's coming into that role from a different position. It's mm. a very different perspective. So it's like, how does he find that leadership and where does he draw from? Because because Captain America just drew, that's why he kept going doing like the whole, like I can do this all day. He has this never ending yep. well of optimism, right? Mm. And like, why would someone that comes from Sam's background, where it's like, he was in the military, he was like just getting rehabbed in the VA, like helping people out and stuff like his drivers are very different to Captain America. How does he pull those drivers in? to become a leader in the Avengers. That's, I'm hoping they'll touch on that at least. Good. Right, that's that's a great um, teasing. Oh, well, it's a great yeah. teaser to maybe what we'll be doing in the next few weeks, which is maybe covering mm. kind of fog. Mm. I don't know, well, it's, yet to, it's yet to be uh, <laughs> it's, 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 it's YouTube faces. Wait, wait, wait. I see something in the desk behind Tom that what? leads me to think that they'll talk about something specific. Purple Easter flowers. Easter. I know, right? Yeah. It's been my wife all along. Um, it's, it's, it's inception. <laughs> Dude, that's like fifth level inception right there, man. That's like, like, we went crazy. Went shit. too deep. All right, cool. I think I think that's enough yeah, for now. Wrap um, let's wrap. Let's wrap it up. Let's wrap the entire series of Wonder Vision recaps. Okay. Oh, um, yes. With nothing, just uh, oh, oh wait, no, no. Yeah, I, I, have one. Oh, I have one. I have one. I heard some. I forget now who it was. I heard someone say uh, this. I thought it was just such a nice wrap up. The whole show, Wonder Vision is a show. It's just a show about the fact that we're all just looking for someone to watch TV with. That's it. Damn, and this is what we've done. I'm like, I thought that was a really good summary, actually. It was really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. I don't even want to do an outro after this. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> we'll kind of forever. No, we don't. <laughs> um, all right, anyway, usually in outro, we'll go yes. for it now. Um, Dave, thanks for joining one last time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks for your time and effort in, uh, you know, getting those theories out there and <laughs> getting mostly most of them wrong like the rest of us <laughs> we're good at this swift kicking the ass on the way out huh there Tom <laughs> like, <"Damn." laughs> that was your that was your <laughs> how's that for firing Dave yeah, <laughs> yeah. please come back Dave <laughs> please come back we'll give you a call like never now before all though, thanks for joining us um yeah. it's greatly appreciated it's nice to have another point of view another set of theories yeah. within those um how about you drop the green and grime podcast plug one more time please yes uh thank you thanks for having me first of all yes. uh, thoroughly enjoyed this uh, different experience uh, to my usual experience, which is hosting the Grit and Grime Basketball Podcast. We release episodes every Wednesday. Um, this week, we're going to be talking a bit about the All Star Game and yeah. then about our own basketball fandom, our stories, our origin stories. JC, yeah, ah, yeah. nice. This okay. is my favorite topic myself. You'll see. It's interesting. <laughs> feels very crossover very nice <laughs> yeah so that'll be on wednesday and we drop every wednesday you can catch us on all platforms and it's good it's- stuff please listen to it and uh yeah jc thanks for joining us one more time we'll be back again with more stuff more content more nerdy stuff to talk about i don't know what the next yeah. our next um podcast is about our next episode i have no idea who knows but it might be something to do with what's behind us it might give you an indication let's get all kaiser so suck about it <laughs> oh god i'm intrigued you should all be intrigued um but yeah thanks again jc every week all day every day and um and uh, what else oh yeah thanks for everyone who's uh, been subscribing to either our instagram account we're still over 1000 thank you very much to those all those those guys who hit subscribe there uh the 300 and something on twitter also kindly 
uh, a, a kind thank you also to you guys. And uh, we're not pushing for Facebook because I think Facebook is not, it's dead. It's dead. It's not a thing anymore. It doesn't matter. Um, and then, yeah, if you're on YouTube, thanks for watching and please, please hit subscribe. And again, and all the other places, please hit subscribe there and like and share and all that good stuff. Uh, oh, and leave some reviews on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify or on Amazon Podcasts or whatever it's called. Um, that will be very helpful and uh, that will help us grow in all directions. So that bombshell, we'll say goodbye. Like like the hex, we're coming. Like the hex. <laughs> <Hey. laughs> Anyway, thank you very much for listening, watching, subscribing, liking, sharing. Have a good one, everyone. And we catch you in the next episode. Bye. Justice for Sparky. Justice for Sparky. <laughs> Hashtag justice for Sparky.